How are we doing everyone? Mitch here with another Logic Pro 10 tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about bouncing or exporting our project into an audio file. So we can put it in iTunes and share it with the world, right? So let's get right into it. We can get to that bounce menu in a few ways. We can go to, we can select file, we can go to bounce, and then project or section. We can select that and this is the menu for bouncing. We can also use the key command, command B, which is what I'm going to be using from now on. Just the easiest and it's pretty easy to remember, right? Command B, bounce, whatever. Okay, so um, uh, as you can see in this view, there's a few things going on. There's a destination, PCM, which is going to be our lost list types of audio formats, our MP3, which is in uh, lossy format, but this is the kind that uh, you're going to share to everyone, right? Because this is, it doesn't have a lot of data associated with it. It's going to be a compressed file type, and that's why you're going to share it to a lot of people. And there's the M4A, which is going to be your video. If you're going to be editing audio for a video, you can export it as a video, and you can also burn it directly to a CD or DVD through this section, all right? So the M4A and burn to CD, DVD, I'm not going to get into very much uh, because you're not going to use those too often unless you're doing that kind of thing, but uh, I'm going to stick to PCM and MP3. Uh, next, I'm going to show the start and end. So if you open up the bounce menu and you do not have your loop on and you do not have any file selected, either MIDI or audio, then your start and end will be based on the start and end of your that is being shown in your range window. So as you can see, the start is at one that I have set up and the end is at 28. And you can see that here in this uh, bounce menu. So that's what's going on here. Uh, what you can do though is if you have a loop on, it goes from two to 10. If I do command bounce, it'll, it'll start and end on that loop. <clears throat> so that's kind of cool. If you want to just do a section, you can just quickly just put a loop over it and get to your bounce menu and it will automatically update. You can also just have a certain file selected. So I'm just going to select this section right here and I'm going to bounce it and you can see that the start and end is 10 and 18 which is when this audio or this file right starts and ends. So that's what's going on there. Um, so I'm just going to unselect it and then bounce again. And uh, alright so the PCM is going to be our lossless types and we can uh, export it to AIFF WAVE or CAF. Those are different file formats. Resolution, 24-bit, uh, 18 and, or sorry, 24, 16, and 8. I have it 24-bit all the time. Sample rate is at 44,000 right now. Uh, that's going to be based on your project sample rate. And then the file type and dithering is going to be more, you're going to get into this more when you're trying to export this track for mastering. Um, I'm not really going to get into the reasons why we select different things here. Um, but just know that's what that's all about. We can do an add to project, which is going to put it into our bin so that we can add it directly back into our project if we want. And we can also do a surround bounce if our project is, uh, is set up that way, right? Our output is a surround check. Um, and then another thing to note here, uh, let me go back, uh, the mode, real time, or offline. Offline is just going to, when you press bounce, it'll just show a progress bar, and when it's done, you're going to get your output, right? So real time is it will start over, It'll play your track, and as it plays, it will be bouncing, or you're, it'll be bouncing your track. So when it's done, then it will push it out to whatever wave or file formats that you have. So that's what's going on there. I usually do offline. Real time, I only do if I want to make sure that um, something's happening. So if you, what you hear in the project is significantly different than what you're getting out in your file format. I would just try a real-time bounce just to make sure that there's nothing going on weird there. Um, and if it's volume that's changing from before to after, it's probably something to do with your normalize option. So just select this to off if that's happening to you. Overload protection is only going to be a negative volume change. So if it reads that your track is, it's going to scan your entire track and say and see if any particular peak is over or clipped. If it is clipped, it's going to lower the volume of the entire track based on that peak so that it will just, it'll basically make sure that it won't clip. Um, on means that normalizing will read your entire file, find the highest peak, and change the volume of your entire track so that that highest peak is going to be at the highest possible volume without clipping. And that's what's going on there. But normally, especially for mastering or whatever, make sure that it's off, normalize off. All right, so uh, that's PCM. It's going to be, this section is going to be the same when you select MP3. But uh, so here in the MP3, you have bitrate mono, bitrate stereo. You hear a lot about 320 kbps, 
for your MP3, that's going to be the highest possible bitrate, uh, and that's just going to be the best sound. Uh, so as you can see, this track is going to be 13.8 megabytes, and that's just for a very small section. So this could be a lot of data. I mean, so that's why that's it's associated with the bitrate, it's how much data you get out. Uh, so there's not going to be very much compression here. It's going to be very close to the loss list type file format. You can also use variable bitrate encoding. Just be careful here because some players, whether it be hardware or software, sometimes aren't set up to do VBR. So that your so that means that your track will actually not sound correct in those players. So just be careful. Most of them do, but if you want to know, that's what's going on there. Uh, so you have the use best encoding and filter frequencies below 10 hertz, right? So 20 hertz is the lower limit of human hearing, so I don't know why you want to go lower than 10, besides if you're wanting to play it in a club and you want to actually feel it in your chest, I don't know, whatever. So that's what, I just usually filter frequencies below 10 hertz. You can choose the stereo mode, normal or certain stereo, joint stereo, sorry. You can write ID3 tags, so you can select, you know, the artist or whatever, and track number. And when you upload into something like iTunes or any other player, it will have that associated with it. Um, so that's what's going on here in the MP3 section. And those are the two sections that I want to go over because those are those two sections that you're going to be using the most. Uh, and as you can see, I have both selected. So when I select bounce, you can select the name, where it's located, and you will get in the output of this both an MP3 and a wave. That's the setup that I had earlier. Uh, so that's really all it is. It's as simple as that. And that's really all I had to share. If you have any more questions on this, uh, please hit me up in a message or just in the comments below. It's just whatever. Um, uh, please take my survey in the uh, description below to choose my next tutorial. And I will be seeing you all very soon, everyone. Thanks for watching.